top of the morning to you. This is Tacky Tai. Today we are looking at another episode of Epic History TV. This is the story of Sir Francis Drake as he sails around the world. And again, as always, be sure to check out the original link down in the description down below for the original content creator. Go give Epic History TV the love and support that they well deserve. Also, simple, simple history is pretty good too. And yeah, let me know your thoughts. Would you be brave enough to do what Sir Francis Drake did and be a privateer? Let me know. The Great Courses Plus. In the 1560s and 70s, Protestant England under Queen Elizabeth was the bitter rival of Philip II's Catholic Spain. Yeah, the, the legalized piracy under the crown. Philip ruled over a vast New World Empire that produced a fortune in gold and silver for the Spanish treasury. The English looked on. Wow, I didn't realize they also controlled Naples too. I forgot about that. that they controlled Naples and Sicily. I knew they they had control of uh, Dutch territory, but V. Though England and Spain weren't technically at war. Elizabeth secretly supported English pirates and smugglers who set out to get rich at Spain's expense. Amongst them, Francis Drake. Drake had made several voyages to Spain's New World Empire, where he'd sold African slaves and raided ships and settlements. In yeah, because he's the first one that actually went around to the the other side he went to the pacific coast which up until this point was really just only the spanish was over there nobody else, everyone else was just in the atlantic in the gulf of mexico and the caribbean like that's where all the hot spots were uh but drake actually decided to like hey let's go to the pacific coast panama he'd climbed a tree to get a view of the pacific ocean and dreamed of becoming the first Englishman to sail it. His chance came in 1577, when the Queen entrusted him with a secret mission to raid the Spanish Empire's Pacific coast. On the 13th of December, Drake sailed for the New World with five ships and 164 men. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty good fleet. En route, Drake's fleet captured several Spanish and Portuguese ships, as well as a Portuguese navigator who knew the South American coast and became... Well, I'm sure that came in handy very much, too. ...in their guide. Cape Verde. After a rough crossing of the Atlantic and 63 days without sight of land, Drake reached the coast of Brazil. That'd be tough. Just sailing in the ocean somewhat aimlessly except the general direction from the stars uh, he struggled south in heavy seas to reach puerto san julian by june yeah uh, this this would be tough down here, here he decided to wait out the winter storms 58 years before magellan leader of the first and at that time only expedition to sail around the world had wintered at the exact same place Drake's crew even found grisly remains of the men Magellan had had executed here for mutiny. By coincidence, Drake also put on trial one of his leading officers here, Thomas Doughty, and found him guilty of trying to sabotage the expedition. Hmm. He too was executed. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're that far away from home, you can't, like, you can't tolerate any sort of upheaval because otherwise it puts the entire mission in jeopardy and everyone's lives really Drake by now down to just three ships continued wow. south only down to three already. he made a smooth passage of the Magellan Strait in just 16 days during which he renamed the Pelican his flagship the Golden Hind a tribute to Sir Christopher Hatton one of the expedition's sponsors and his coat of arms. In hmm. September, 
Drake and his men became the first Englishmen to reach the Pacific, where they were met by 52 days of hurricane winds and mountainous seas. Oh, that would suck. One ship, the Marigold, was lost with all hands. The Marigold. Another, the Elizabeth, sailed back through the strait and fled for home. Only the Golden Hind was left, driven south towards Cape Horn and into the world's roughest seas. You don't want to go down there. Europeans believed a great southern continent lay in this region. But Drake saw only more ocean. Well, I mean, they're not wrong, but it's just a little bit further south than what they're probably prepared to, to go. There was no southern continent here, but there was an open sea route around the tip of America one which would later bear his name. The winds eventually eased, and Drake sailed north, hoping to barter for supplies with local tribes on Mocha Island. I bet they're, they're only used to Spanish conquistadors and sailors. I don't know if they're, I don't think they'd be friendly. But they mistook Drake's men for the hated Spanish yeah. and attacked. Two of Drake's men were killed, and he himself was badly wounded. An arrow Despite to the this eye. setback, Drake had now arrived at the Spanish Pacific coast, which was virtually unguarded and had received no warning of his approach. There you go. It was the start of one of the greatest robbing sprees of all time. Got the element of surprise. First, he hit the Spanish port of Valparaiso, where he took Chilean gold and wine. Then Arica, where he seized 40 bars of silver. Hmm. At El Callao, he robbed every ship in the harbour. But more valuable than any loot, he was told that the Spanish treasure ship, Nuestra Señora ah. de la Concepción, there we go. Had sailed north just two weeks before. Spanish treasure fleets. That's Drake what the goal set is. off in pursuit and overtook the Spanish galleon off the coast of Ecuador. Because they're slow, too. They're just so. F they're bursting at the seams with gold. The Spanish crew had no reason to fear an English pirate in the Pacific. Such a thing was unheard of. Yeah. So when the Golden Hind opened fire, they were taken completely by surprise and quickly surrendered. Yeah, you want, it to, you want them to surrender though, because you don't want to sink that ship. In the galleon's hold, Drake's men found 36 kilos of gold, 26 tons of silver, wow. 13 chests of silver coin, jewels, and a golden crucifix. A haul worth today around $60 million. Wow. The Golden Hind, using Peruvian silver for ballast, continued up the coast. Wow, using gold and silver as ballast. Now the trick is to get back over into the Atlantic, though. Because, I mean, there is no Northwest Passage. There is no canal in Panama. It's like, they know you're, they know you're there now. Stopping off to raid Huatulco in modern Mexico for supplies. Go to the Galapagos. For the last few months, Drake had been desperately hoping to rejoin the Marigold, unaware of her destruction in the Southern Ocean. Now he was forced to accept that the ship and his comrades were lost, and headed up the Pacific coast, hmm. hoping to find a theoretical Northwest Passage back to the Atlantic and England. I mean, there is technically a Northwest Passage, but it's, it's pretty far north, probably farther north than their capital ship is able to muster. Drake may have sailed as far north as Vancouver Island hmm. before giving up and returning to land in California, run where I am. which he named Nova Albion, New Britain and claimed on behalf of Queen Elizabeth. The English were welcomed by local Miwok Native Americans. The English thought they were being welcomed as gods, but it's possible that with their pale faces, they were instead seen by the Miwok 
as ancient spirits return from the dead. Drake's men spent five weeks making repairs to the Golden Hind, Interesting. because they knew there was now only one way home. The Spanish in South America were on high alert. And if a Northwest Passage did exist, Drake had failed to find it. Yeah. So he would sail west, across Ooh. the vast Pacific Ocean, wow. and circumnavigate the Earth in order to get home. That, that is a massive feat, especially because you're, you're filled to the brim with gold too. And the Pacific is quite a bit bigger than the Atlantic. It's a big Drake feat. set sail on the 23rd of July, Just to 1579. Sail aimlessly this direction. For 68 days, they had no sight of land. Wow. But then finally reached Palau. And then the Philippines. There we go. They sailed on to the Spice or Maluku Islands, and added priceless cloves to a cargo that was already worth a fortune. Yeah, cloves were very expensive and in high demand as well. But as the Golden Hind set off for home, disaster struck. Beyond sight oh. of land, in deep water, the ship suddenly hit a reef. Oh, and thought, stuck fast. Thought they were going to get attacked. The sailors thought they were doomed. They threw cannon and some of their priceless cargo overboard to lighten the ship, and prayed to God. Wow. Twenty hours later, in what seemed to Drake's men a miracle, winds and tide lifted them off the reef. Yeah, that would suck to to just get like beached on a reef, just in the middle of the water. Like you're screwed. Like, there's nothing really you can do. Like, I don't even think... It'd be difficult to even, like, tow it, essentially, with another boat or ship. Like, I, I don't know if that would work. It would just rip the hull. The Golden Hind continued to thread its way through the islands of Indonesia. And after a two-week stop in Java, Drake set sail across the Indian Ocean. It's an interesting way to go. Just just going straight across the Indian Ocean, because, I mean, he is an Englishman, so he could go up towards the northern Indian Ocean. But, I mean, that... I mean, this way, maybe you'll avoid the Swahili uh, coast and pirates. In June, he rounded the Cape of Good Hope, and put in at Sierra Leone for fresh supplies. Sierra Leone, little British. Without colony. further incident, he reached Plymouth on the 26th of September, 1580, with 59 surviving crew. Wow. He set off with five ships, came back with 59 crew, but every man worth their weight in gold. His cargo of gold, silver, and spices made a fortune for Drake and the investors in his voyage. Their return was an estimated 4,600%. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth was one of those to profit handsomely from his success. And the following year had Drake knighted aboard the Golden Hind in London. There we go. Drake's remarkable voyage made him the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. Wow. He would go on to win even greater fame with a leading role in the defeat of the Spanish Armada eight years later. Sir Francis Drake today remains one of England's huh. greatest naval heroes. Yeah, because I mean, he was a privateer, he was a pirate, a legal pirate under the crown. Drake's daring expedition is part of a story of human exploration that goes right back into prehistory. If you want to find out more, why not start a free... Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, would you have the balls to go and do that? Because, I mean, that that would be a, really a, a, a cruise for a lifetime. I mean, to go, even just going privateering and taking on the, the treasure fleets of the Spanish Empire. I mean, those 
Those are some legendary fleets. And they were well defended usually too, but they just caught them on surprise. So yeah, let me know and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.